If you're not going to make the most of this opportunity, God will find somebody else who can. I've been spending a lot of time thinking about impact and how there are pockets of time, there are seasons that we're supposed to do certain things. And in those seasons, we have a grace for it, there is favor attached, and how if we decide to delay on those things, we can actually miss out on our story. You know, I believe that our lives are bigger than us and our purpose is not just for us as individuals, but for the kingdom, for other people, and to really bless them. So if I am attached to person B, and my obedience is going to lead to them getting their blessing, and I decide that I'm not going to take the opportunity, that person is not going to be left high and dry. Somebody else is going to come around and do the thing, and then that person, instead of me, is going to get the accolades and the good graces that come from our lives being attached to other people. Thinking of this had me thinking about the book of Esther and how Esther was divinely put into a spot that shouldn't have been hers for a reason bigger than herself to be able to save the Jews from being annihilated by bad vibes Haman and all of his ridiculous decrees. Before I get into how Esther was put into the opportunity of a lifetime it's important to talk about how the opportunity even became opened. So the king of Persia was a man who just liked to show his wealth and his affluence and he was hosting these parties and just showing everybody that I've got it like that unlimited alcohol unlimited vibes it just went on for so long and at the time his wife his main wife was Queen Vashti so he told um, his eunuch go call Vashti for me like bring her out so that I can not just show that I have money but I can also show that I have that beautiful woman I can parade her around and show y'all that I'm that king I'm that guy so they go and call Vashti and she was like no I don't want to go <laughs> and when they came back to the king and they told him he was so upset he's like what does she mean she didn't want to come out and his advisors were like what she did was wrong and we don't want the other women in the community to feel like they can disobey their husbands so you gotta banish Vashti and also make a decree that the men are the head of the house and they must be obeyed and not just that you need to also find a new queen so the king was like that's a great idea nice let me go find a new queen let me make that decree all of that good stuff so he proceeds to put out a call to the women to come about and become queen and this is where Esther now comes into play Esther was a Jew and at the time this kingdom wasn't really for the Jews in that way so her uncle Mordecai told her shh, shh, shh don't say nothing don't tell anybody that you're a Jew and just go in with the other queen prospects and we'll see what happens and the moment she got in there she had favor from everyone she had favor from the eunuchs she got preferential treatment she was even able to stay in a different quarters with like people waiting on her hand and foot during this one year preparation process to meet the king and see if he wants you as his queen and when she went in lo and behold this favor per persisted and she ended up being selected to be the queen at the same time bad vibes Haman was upset with Mordecai because he didn't bow down to him and instead of him just saying I want Mordecai destroyed he's like no I want to destroy every single Jew in our in our vicinity and make a decree he went and told the king and the king signed a declaration and when Mordecai found out about this he was so stressed and overwhelmed like he tore his clothes he was like praying and fasting and all of the Jews were praying and fasting and it got to the point where um, someone went back and told Esther and they're like Esther your uncle is at the front like crying and lamenting like what's happening and she's like ask him what happened and this is another part right like Esther is a Jew but she's so far above and outside of what's happening that even though she's in the palace she doesn't even know that this declaration has been made to wipe her people off the face of this city of this area so when her uncle tells her she says to him no her uncle says to her you need to go to the king and ask him to undo this and she was like I can't just go to the king 
because if he doesn't call for you and you go to him and he doesn't accept you by extending his scepter, you're going to be put to death. And Mordecai goes, okay, I get it. But at the same time, if you don't do this, somebody else will. Like, don't think that if you don't come and help the Jews that there will be no help for us. And also, don't think that because you're the queen, you're going to be exempt from what happens to us. And secondly, the part that he said that really resonated with me was, you may have been put in that position as queen for a moment such as this, for this exact moment. And Esther, being wise and listening to wise counsel, was like, you know what? You might be right. What I'm going to need you to do is get all of, all of the Jews to pray for me and fast for three days and me and my people in the kingdom are also going to fast and pray for three days and at the end of those three days I am going to go to the king and if I perish I perish and that is standing on business she's like I need to do this for my people if I die I die it is what it is but luckily as the story would go Esther found the favor of the king when she went to him and he was like tell me what you want me to do anything you want me to do I will literally give you half of this kingdom he just loved her so much and at the end of the day the story goes on and they're able to save the Jews and bad vibes Haman ended up being killed on the spike that he had set up to kill Mordecai out of his anger and rage. I say all of that to say that we are put in certain positions for certain purposes. And if we think that because we're in this position of power, of access, of influence, that we are now so far removed from the people who we used to associate with that we shouldn't care for them, we are going to miss out on our opportunities to do what we were set out to do. Esther found favor every single step of the way, all the way until the end. And if at any point she had taken that favor and just thought, you know, I was meant to be here. I'm an orphan. I suffered. And this is my moment to sit pretty. And I don't need to even relate to my people anymore. And I don't need to worry about all of that stuff. She would not be in the Bible. She would have missed out on history. And as God's favor would have it, the Jews would be saved by somebody else. She would just not be able to be a part of the story that we're now reading. So my question to you is, what position are you in and are you maximizing on the opportunities and impact that you're supposed to have within that position? I don't believe that we need to be in a rush. I don't think that we're supposed to just rush through life and blaze through and rip through to try and hit all of the success metrics that society says we have to reach. But at the same time, I think it's important for us to remember that we need to be urgent. If you are in a situation, if you are in a position of power, if you are in a space where you are feeling the urge, the calling, the, the pressure, the discomfort to do something, and you're sitting there thinking that, yeah, I'll get to it when I have time. Who says? That, in my opinion, is one of like the biggest acts of ego in a way. Because for you to think that the whole world will stop and life and seasons will be delayed and postponed for you to decide you feel like doing something you're supposed to do is to put yourself in a place of egotistical power, in my opinion, that you shouldn't. If you are blessed, if you are favored enough and graced to be the one who is supposed to change the narrative, to change the story, to be that person who is supposed to be the catalyst to trigger something, don't take that lightly. Because throughout the Bible, looking at Esther and what Mordecai told her, she was able to heed the instruction and do the right thing. But throughout the Bible, there are many people who were put into positions of power who took it lightly or disobeyed and through their disobedience somebody else was raised up instead right like the ultimate Adam disobeyed and Jesus Christ was raised up instead David and Saul Saul was the king his lineage was supposed to be the king forever and ever he disobeyed and David was raised up same thing with Moses so if we sit here and think that we are just allowed to act however we want, we're going to end up missing out on a lot of opportunities and blessings and being a blessing to others that should have had our name on it. There are certain people who are supposed to look back on their life and say, wow, if not for you, 
I don't think I'd be here today. Just like how we can look back on our lives and think, if not for that person who was there, who just took a shot and took a chance on me, I wouldn't be where I was. So don't delay. Don't think that because you are here that somebody else can't be here. We're all replaceable. And the one thing that's not replaceable is God's purpose on this earth. So if he has added us into the fold of that story with honor and gratitude for being chosen amongst the millions, amongst the multitude, we need to pick up the pace and do the thing we're supposed to do. So whatever it is that this little pseudo attack that I just made on you is triggering for you whatever ideas it's bringing up whatever thing you know you were supposed to do that you're not doing this is the sign to pick it up send that email make that call make that connection send that money like whatever it is that you're supposed to do this is a reminder for you to do it because if you don't do it somebody else will is there anything that you know you've been delaying on and this is the wake-up call that you need to get it done Write it in the comments below so that we can all encourage you to pick up the pace and get urgent. So I really hope that this helps you. And if you like this video, like. If you loved it, subscribe. And if you think that there is someone in your life who needs to hear this message, please share it with them. And I want you to continue to be kind to yourself because you're a work in progress and you're making progress. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.